If your arms turned into wings, <laughs> could you actually fly? Oh my, no. You're better off turning a boiling water reactor into a nuclear fusion tokamak using duct tape. Wrong geometry, wrong physics, wrong material. Well, they would need to be at least 20 feet wide to carry you. So lift scales with area, but mass scales with volume. And humans are basically dense little reactors. So a 200 pound human would need wings about the size of a Cessna's flaps. And that's before you add the muscle mass needed to move them. And you would need chest muscles <laughs> twice the size of a bodybuilder's just to lift them. Try five times or more. Bird flight muscles make up something like 30 to 40 percent of total mass. Looks like he's got a pressurized containment dome sticking two feet out from his rib cage. To make these muscles more stable, you would need one giant bone in your chest. The keel but bone. You be what, about the size of a skateboard? Be too heavy to lift off by flapping, so instead, Ed, you would have to jump off a cliff and glide. Human hang glider. Falling with aerodynamic dignity. And since your lungs aren't designed for flight, you would pass out mid air. Forget that, metabolic overload would get you. Humans use dead end lungs, like old steam generators. Fine for ground life, not optimized for thin air acrobatics. But again, the metabolic overload would get you first. Meaning you would need an oxygen tank to stay conscious as you flew. That would help a little bit, but you're gonna cook yourself with that metabolic heat load first. Be like a reactor with no coolant flow.